Imagine a time long before the modern world, a time steeped in mystery and legend, a time when the United Kingdom was a raw canvas of untamed wilderness inhabited by Ice Age hunter-gatherers. These were the first inhabitants, the pioneers who braved the harsh elements, leaving behind a legacy etched in the bones of the land. Then came the enigmatic architects of Stonehenge, a testament to human ingenuity that still baffles us today. Who were these people? And what drove them to construct such a monumental testament to human will and spirit? The plot thickens with the arrival of the Celts, a vibrant and complex society that added their unique threads to the rich tapestry of Britain's early history. Their influence spanned across the arts, culture and warfare, leaving an indelible mark that still resonates today. And so the stage was set for the arrival of a new power, the Romans. In the year 43 AD, the mighty legions of Rome set foot on British shores. The Roman invasion was a grand display of power and strategy. The Romans, known for their architectural prowess, left their mark on the British landscape. The most prominent among these is Hadrian's Wall, a sturdy barrier against the northern tribes, a symbol of Roman determination and engineering skill. But Rome's grip on Britain wasn't eternal. Over time, the empire began to crumble. The once mighty legions were stretched thin across their vast territories. By the early 5th century, the Romans had completely withdrawn from Britain. They left behind them a rich legacy of roads, buildings and a system of governance. Yet, their departure created a void. Britain found itself on the brink of a new era, leaderless and vulnerable. As the Romans left, they left behind a power vacuum and into this chaos new invaders would emerge. In the shadows, lurking, were the Vikings ready to seize the opportunity. From the icy north came a storm, a storm of steel and fire, the Vikings. Their long ships, like predatory sea serpents, emerged from the fog, striking fear into the hearts of those who bore witness. They were not just raiders, but explorers and settlers, leaving an indelible mark on the British Isles. Their invasions were fierce, relentless and unyielding. They carved out territories establishing the Danelaw, a realm where their laws ruled supreme. They were a force that reshaped the land, its people and its culture. Norse words seeped into the English language, Norse gods found their place in local folklore, and Norse artistry influenced the aesthetics of the time. But as history unfolded, the Viking storm began to calm. Their dominance waned, their power receded. The Age of Vikings, a tumultuous and transformative era, was drawing to a close. But the Viking Age was not to last, and a new kingdom was on the rise. In the heart of the island, a kingdom was growing. A kingdom that would become England. This was a time of kings and warriors, a time when a man named Alfred, known to us now as Alfred the Great, took the reins and led the country towards unification in the 9th century. He built fortresses, promoted learning and defended his realm against Viking invaders. But the tale of England does not stop there. By the 11th century, the Norman conquest, led by William the Conqueror, reshaped the land's political landscape. Their reign brought forth a new era and the establishment of the Plantagenet dynasty, a lineage of rulers whose influence would extend far beyond the shores of England. These were the days of chivalry and courtly love, but also of intrigue and power struggles, paving the way for the England we now know. And yet, even as England grew in power, it was about to face its greatest crisis. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, but these roses brought only the stench of war. As the 15th century dawned, the Plantagenet dynasty, symbolized by the red and white roses, was embroiled in a bitter civil war. This tumultuous period, known as the War of the Roses, saw familial bonds broken and alliances constantly shifting. In the midst of this turmoil, a new power emerged. The Tudor dynasty, led by Henry VII, claimed the throne ending three decades of conflict. The Tudors brought a semblance of stability and unity to England, but they also brought their own brand of controversy. Under the reign of Henry VIII, England witnessed a radical shift. The King's personal and political decisions, including his infamous marital affairs and his break with the Catholic Church, forever altered the course of English history. But even as the Tudors reshaped England, the world was changing around them. As the age of exploration dawned, Britain cast its gaze across the seas. As the 15th century gave way to the 16th, Britain, a relatively small island nation, began to dream big. 
It looked beyond its shores and towards the vast, uncharted waters of the world. The age of exploration had begun, and with it, the seeds of the British Empire were sown. This empire, however, was not born overnight. It was the result of hundreds of years of exploration, conquest and colonization. From the Americas in the West to India in the East, Britain's reach extended across the globe. It was during this time that the phrase, the sun never sets on the British Empire was coined, symbolizing the vastness of its territories. The empire's growth was further fueled by the Industrial Revolution in the 18th and 19th centuries. Britain was at the forefront of this revolution, leading the world in technological advancements and production methods. Factories sprung up across the country, churning out goods for export to its colonies, and in turn, wealth poured back into Britain, solidifying its position as a global superpower. But the empire was not without its challenges. The two world wars of the 20th century tested Britain's resilience and resources. The First World War strained its military and economic power, while the Second saw its cities devastated by bombing and its people living in fear. Yet, Britain persevered, demonstrating a spirit that was as indomitable as the empire it had built. Despite its victories, the World Wars also signalled the beginning of the end for the British Empire. The immense cost of the wars, coupled with a growing demand for independence from its colonies, led to a gradual decline. By the mid-20th century, many of its colonies had gained independence, and the empire was no more. The sun never set on the British Empire, but all empires must eventually fall. In the aftermath of war, Britain found itself a changed nation. Emerging from the shadows of the Second World War, Britain was a country in transition. The once mighty empire had been shaken to its core, its people weary yet hopeful for a brighter future. This was the birth of modern Britain, a nation striving to redefine its place in the world. Post-war Britain was a time of significant social and political change. The British people, having endured years of hardship and sacrifice, were eager for a better life, and so the welfare state was born. From the ashes of war sprung a new social contract, one that promised health care for all, education and social security. The National Health Service, an institution that remains at the heart of British society, was one such product of this period. Yet this was also a time of economic challenge. The war had left Britain financially drained, its empire beginning to crumble. In an effort to restore stability and prosperity, Britain looked to its neighbours in Europe. The establishment of the European Economic Community, later to become the European Union, marked a significant shift in Britain's global outlook. No longer an empire standing alone, Britain became part of a larger European family. However, Britain's relationship with the European Union has been far from smooth. From the initial scepticism of joining a European community to the controversial decision to leave the Union in the Brexit referendum, Britain's EU journey has been marked by uncertainty and division. Despite these challenges, modern Britain has proven its resilience time and time again. From the post-war reconstruction to the technological revolution, Britain has continued to evolve, always adapting, always moving forward. And so we arrive at the present day, a nation shaped by thousands of years of history. A Britain that is no longer an empire, but a modern diverse nation, proud of its past, yet eager to forge its future. A nation that continues to shape and be shaped by the world around it. A nation that, in its heart, carries the echoes of its history and the promise of its future. But what of the future? What new chapters await in the story of the United Kingdom? In the crucible of time, the United Kingdom has been shaped and reshaped, each era leaving its distinct mark. Now, as we stand on the brink of a new epoch, the winds of change are stirring once again. Climate change looms large, posing unprecedented challenges. Rising sea levels and extreme weather events could redraw the map of this island nation, forcing us to rethink our ways of life. In the world of politics, the UK is navigating uncharted waters. The quest for unity amidst diversity continues as the country grapples with evolving identities and shifting demographics. The tension between tradition and transformation is palpable and the outcome uncertain. The march of technology too is relentless. From artificial intelligence to biotechnology, the innovations of tomorrow promise to revolutionize every aspect of our society. Yet, they also present new dilemmas to solve and ethical issues to debate. As we look forward to the future, we must ask ourselves, what will be the next chapter in the story of the United Kingdom?